topic two is hot runners. So I'm gonna call this a quick hit section on a capability of SolidWorks Plastics. And with this, uh, well, you can read what Wikipedia says about a hot runner system. Now, most of us are probably familiar with a cold runner system. That's where the sprue and runner are cut into the core and cavity of the mold tool, and that provides the path for molten resin to fill into the part cavity. And we cut off the sprue and runner system and we throw that away. Uh, or regrind it later on. Now, a hot runner, this is a separate subsystem of the mold tool, and it replaces the cold runner system. Now, there are pros and cons of including a hot runner system in your injection mold tooling, and I've listed a few of them here on this slide. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the steps for including a hot runner system in SolidWorks Plastics. All right, so we'll take a look at our second model here. Uh, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the geometry that we're working with. So I'm going to go to a section view here, just a little preview. Let me rotate this on screen. All right, so you do need to include a physical component in your CAD model for the hot runner system. And in a real hot runner system, you would have a physical metal body that acts like a plunger that's going to seal off the gate area. All right, so you don't, well, you don't really need to include the physical plunger but you do want to actually build in uh, you know, that hollowed out section to represent where that plunger would be located. Uh, another key is make sure that it comes all the way out the end so that you only have a continuous volume here. All right, so let's go back a couple of views and we'll take a look at what it takes to add a hot runner system to your analysis. Well, well let's just go this way. All right, so I'm gonna start a new SolidWorks plastic study. Uh, by the way, this has to be done with a solid mesh. So I'll click on my check mark there. Uh, I would only want to do the fill analysis early on. So we'll go ahead and just switch the analysis type. And I'll just come into a recently used material. So let's say I use hostile in. All right, now this body here, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to specify that it's a runner. And then this component will automatically be recognized as my cavity. Right now, when it comes to setting this up, a hot runner is nothing more than adding a boundary condition. All right, so obviously the first boundary condition that we need to add would be where we're filling this cavity from. And then to specify a hot runner system, it's just a right click on my boundary conditions, choose filled hot runner, and then left click on the component. And then this is where we specify what we're holding that molten resin at for the analysis. All right. Uh, some other steps that you would do here, uh, you would generate your mesh. Uh, you're going to start out with a solid, sorry, a surface mesh on the components and then transform that into a solid. And then what will happen is in the analysis, this is going to be continuously filled with plastic for your study. All right, so I'm not going to go through the full meshing setup uh, and then the actual solve, but we'll just jump right into some results for what you would see working with a hot runner system. So a couple of things to note, uh, you'll notice all of the hot runner system is in blue, which is basically zero seconds. That's because it's always full of molten resin. And we'll just do a quick analysis here. I'll slow this down just a little bit. And this, of course, is what you would be focused on. You know, what happens to the part versus what would happen if you actually needed to push resin through that hot runner, so, sorry, through your old runner system, the, the sprue and runner, to get to the actual cavity that you're interested in. Uh, some other things uh, when you're doing your post-processing, um, yes, you do get the output of what the pressure is through the hot runner system. Um, and then there are ways where you could actually get rid of that and just focus on pressure on the cavity itself. Um, anyhow, that's just some of the things that you could do with hot runner system and some of the benefits. Um, in the big scheme of things, it's nothing more than just adding this as a boundary condition your SolidWorks Plastics project. All right, so we'll go ahead and close that one. Uh, so there, uh, a few key takeaways there for including a hot runner system in your plastic study. Uh, as I mentioned, you must include the CAD model of the hot runner for your analysis. Uh, the valve plunger that's in the real hot runner system, it does move and actually seals off uh, that nozzle where plastic flows into the cavity. Uh, for our analysis, that mechanism movement is not included in plastics, um, but we do have to, to basically remove the plunger so that it generates that internal void. 
Uh, hot runner system, it's just a simple boundary condition as I showed in the quick example. Uh, and as I also mentioned, it is for a solid mesh plastic study. So hopefully you can take advantage of those.